everyone, this is Group 4 presenting Starbucks Coffee. My name is Bismillah Ahmadi and my colleagues here are Sara Mujda and Geza Zafar and Farhad Amiri. Uh, today our group is going to talk about market environment of Starbucks in Afghanistan, marketing strategy, market segmentation, target market, pricing strategy, intellectual property, rules and regulations, risk factors, investor analysis, conclusions and recommendations. Market environment of Starbucks in Afghanistan are categorized into two main parts. First one is microenvironment. Microenvironment are the environment and forces that directly affect uh, the functionality of Starbucks. Uh, one of these parts are suppliers. Suppliers of Starbucks have to supply machines and coffee beans uh, to uh, Starbucks in Afghanistan. I think this cannot be any kind of problem because they, they can have pre contract and they can use China or India as their source of supply. Second one is market intermediates. Uh, for Starbucks to have all these products available across the country, they have to use market intermediates as uh, restaurants and ca cafes. And the third one is customers. Customers of uh, uh, Starbucks are mostly households and uh, uh, government officials. Uh, the second one is macro environment. Macro environment are the forces that uh, indirectly affect the functionality of the company. Uh, a list of macro environment is political and legal forces. I think uh, Starbucks doesn't have any problem with political and legal forces. They have to go through the process, uh, though, but there will not be any problem. Economic environment uh, is very low in uh, Afghanistan, and the income in Afghanistan is low, but in future it, it, it can progress. Social and cultural forces uh, uh, can affect uh, Starbucks. Uh, because of the uh, culture of uh, coffee drinking in Afghanistan, because they don't have such a culture, but they can uh, nurture such a culture in the future. Technological environment uh, is not available and practical in Afghanistan for r right now, but in future they can use technological uh, sources too. Marketing strategy of Starbucks can consist of uh, the quality of product. Quality of products uh, is always good. Uh, about the Starbucks and I'm sure that they will have the same quality in Afghanistan. Uh, second, uh, Starbucks have to provide uh, people with a comfortable places to enjoy their coffee. Such places should have natural view and for seeking these places uh, they can use coffee as their uh, initial source. Uh, the third one is customer satisfaction. As always, uh, I know that the primary goal of uh, Starbucks is uh, satisfying their customers and uh, I know that they can uh, Afghans will be fully satisfied with their uh, products. Uh, branding, brand marketing, uh, Starbucks can use media as billboards in Afghanistan to show the people of Afghanistan that we are a brand and brand will st speak for their uh, theorism. Innovation, Starbucks have to innovate new ways to tell people of Afghanistan that uh, they have to use coffee and tell them about the benefits of coffee. Thank you for listening. I'm inviting Farhad Amir to continue the presentation. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Farhad Amiri and I'm going to uh, continue the presentation. Uh, market segmentation, we have two kinds of market segmentation, one is geographic segmentation and the other is customer segmentation. Geographic segmentation is uh, narrowing down the market according to the uh, geographic location, uh, which uh, uh, Starbucks should uh, choose the most, uh, the, the most uh, the safest uh, and the safest and securest places in Afghanistan, uh, which is uh, uh, the capital of Afghanistan, Kabul, and the other uh, provinces are not secure, uh, are not secure, and uh, they they cannot uh, have their stores in other uh, provinces, uh, but they can have uh, the uh, their store uh, uh, in in Kabul. The other one is customer segmentation. Customer segmentation is narrowing down the market economy to the customer, uh, customers, uh, social, uh, social class and income. Uh, most of um, these customers are li uh, that uh, Starbucks can target are living uh, near Hamid Karzai uh, Airport, International Air Airport, and also um, in near uh, to Sharon now that they, they do not have uh, that much econ economic uh, problems and they can pay for the uh, copies. Uh, target market. Uh, target market are, uh, are a group of people uh, with uh, common demand and characteristics, and uh, custom uh, and uh, Starbucks can uh, target uh, 
uh, those Afghans and our foreigners that are uh, working in organizations and uh, NGOs uh, that they can pay for their coffee. Uh, uh, based on our um, survey, based on our survey, the uh, most uh, most of the uh, population in our survey was uh, uh, people with the age range of uh, 18 to 30 years old. Uh, that uh, Starbucks can target them. Uh, coming to pri pricing strategy, uh, in pricing strategy, um, Starbucks should uh, consider three factors. One is uh, one is the prices that uh, people are willing to pay. The other is the, the uh, prices that uh, its rivals or uh, its competitors uh, charge people to uh, charge people for the coffee. And the uh, third one is the cost, and uh, cost based on the cost uh, that they, they have. The first one, uh, as you can see in the figure one, uh, most of the people uh, uh, choose to pay, uh, are willing to pay uh, between 0 0.5 to $1 uh, per cup of coffee. And uh, in second uh, figure, you can see uh, the competitors of, uh, competitors of Starbucks that they, um, they are charging people uh, 0 0.5 to one dollar uh, per cup of coffee. That is the most uh, and the highest uh, percentage in these two figures. Uh, and the third factor is uh, the cost analysis uh, that uh, uh, Starbucks have uh, direct and indirect costs, and uh, if they uh, consider both, um, if they consider all the three factors, they, they have to choose the price between 0 0.5 to two dollars. Uh, per cup of coffee. Now I would like to call uh, my other group mates, group mate uh, Angela Zafar, to continue uh, the presentation. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone. I'm going to talk about rules and regulations of our partners' investment in Afghanistan. Firstly, I'm going to talk about how Starbucks would work, uh, start working in Afghanistan, in order to legally work, start work in its business for Starbucks and Afghanistan, they have to, first, Starbucks has to uh, have to get a license. And for getting a license, it has to apply in ISO. Uh, it's, an, um, it's an agency that, uh, that gives out license to domestic businesses and uh, foreign businesses, and also Ministry of Commerce. And if necessary, it would also be reviewed by Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In order to get the license, the uh, Starbucks have to first apply, and then they have to submit the uh, necessary documents, such as passports, uh, any ID cards, visas, or um, their proposal, uh, anything that would belong to the uh, business, and anything that would make sure the government of Afghanistan that this foreigner is only investing in Afghanistan and it is legal. The second thing is, uh, after the registration of uh, all those stuff, the license would be uh, given to Starbucks in uh, uh, between three months up to six months. It's a long procedure. Uh, and um, after that, uh, Starbucks can legally start its business in Afghanistan. Also, um, uh, since uh, Starbucks has a trademark, uh, uh, for a um, trademark for its company, then the trademark should be uh, registered in Afghanistan according to the laws of Afghanistan. Uh, fortunately, Afghanistan protects in intellectual property such as trademark because in Afghanistan it's a very common thing that trademarks are not very necessary for businesses and uh, it's not very known in the culture of uh, businesses in Afghanistan that uh, trademarks shouldn't be used for each other. That's why uh, Starbucks should uh, legally register it in ISO and uh, the trademarks uh, would have 10 years of registration and uh, it would only take up to three months. It's the same process like the registering for license and it won't uh, take long. After that, mm, it will be Starbucks trademarks and nobody can use it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to discuss about Starbucks if it comes to Afghanistan is the pistol analysis for Starbucks in Afghanistan. Uh, it stands for political, economical, social, uh, technological, legal and environmental. Coming to political, 
uh, Afghanistan's government is a huge supporter of uh, foreign businesses and foreign investments in Afghanistan. According to Article 10 of the uh, Constitution of Afghanistan, it, support, it clearly supports uh, foreign investors to come and have a business in Afghanistan. So uh, there is no huge impact from politi politics in Afghanistan for Starbucks. The second thing is economical. Uh, and it is a very huge advantage for Afghanistan and Afghan community to have Starbucks in Afghanistan because first, they would have more job opportunities, the economic uh, situation would improve significantly because there would be, uh, by creating more, more and more job opportunities if, it, if its branches go on in different provinces. The second thing would be uh, the currency of Afghanistan would be used mostly for this, so there's another aspect uh, for economical improvement. And uh, the next thing is social. Socially, the culture of using more and more soda and energy drinks would be uh, decreased and the use of caffeine would, uh, coffee would be increased. And the other thing is the culture of coming, brands coming into Afghanistan will increase, which is a very advantage, huge advantage for Afghanistan. The next thing, technologically, uh, the usage of technology would increase more uh, because of its communication and marketing uh, through uh, technology for Starbucks. The next thing is legal. As, I, uh, as it is discussed before, uh, legally Starbucks has to take into consideration the licensing process, the investment law, tax law, it has to pay taxes law uh, annually or uh, monthly. Uh, according to its income. Also, there's one more thing that uh, Starbucks has to take care of is that uh, the health issues, uh, Ministry of Health would make sure that the usage of caffeine would be uh, average and it would be good. Then the last thing I would point out is that environmental, Nepal would, uh, Nepal would make sure by Starbucks that Starbucks, uh, which is a good thing about Starbucks is that they recycle their papers so there is not much environmental damage. Uh, now I would like to my uh, teammate to continue the discussion. Thank you everyone. And I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, risk analysis that uh, Starbucks should uh, consider when it starts its business in Afghanistan. It should consider this SWOT, uh, and I've uh, reached the uh, SWOT analysis, which is uh, uh, the strengths of the com uh, talking about the strengths, weakness, and opportunities to treat that the company faces in Afghanistan. The strengths that Starbucks has is, first of all, it's a brand, uh, and its global brand is going to be very attractive for Afghanistan and also them. Um, um, uh, when it starts its business, it's going to enter to the monoplastic uh, competitions, which is going to be very profitable for the company. High quality of the beans that uh, Starbucks uses is going to be a strength for the company because it's going to be attractive for the customer. And also it has a unique ways of satisfaction, customer satisfaction, like uh, um, uh, uh, offering some uh, free uh, Wi-Fi or these uh, kind of gifts that it offers to the customers is going to be a strength of the company. For the weakness, is the uh, the, um, uh, one of the weakness that it faces is the lack of the skilled workers, which is an internal weakness for the company, lack of adoption to the different uh, cultures, like it does not use different flavors, so it's going to be another weakness of the company, and also lack of subdivisions of the Starbucks in Afghanistan and other provinces is going to be for um, a, a weakness for the company. And also for opportunities, uh, raising demands for the Starbucks products or for the coffee products in Afghanistan. Recently, uh, most of Afghanistan um, had to um, consume coffee in the, while they are working in offices. And also, uh, it's uh, going to be a good opportunity for the company to uh, expand its product line. And also, the threats that the company faces are the, um, the security of the country, which uh, most of the businesses are not willing to invest in Afghanistan due to security issues. Um, high price of Starbucks products is also going to be another uh, issue that should consider uh, because there are other competitors in the, com uh, in the country that are going to um, grow, offer lower prices. And also offer other uh, caffeine, uh, caffeine uh, contained beverages such as energy drinks are going to be another treat for the company. And uh, um, after uh, doing the research for this um, uh, assignment, we have co uh, come up with the conclusion that Starbucks should start its business in Afghanistan, should invest in Afghanistan because it's going to be the first brand with quality coffee products in the country. 
and also the absence of other uh, strong competitors in the Arafan market is going to be a good opportunity for the country to uh, for the company to um, make profit. And also, startups can have its source in Afghanistan in a very secure part in places like airports or uh, in uh, some uh, malls, stream of malls like uh, Kabul City Center. This is not going to be free for the company. And also, we have very specific recommendations that Starbucks should localize its products based on the co uh, target market. It can use saffron instead of uh, vanilla since uh, for its products, so it's going to be attractive for that one. And also, in order to uh, prevent from the corruption that exists in the, in the during the registration that uh, Starbucks may face, uh, they should uh, refer to the international treaties and also adjust its price based on its customer demand. Since during the research, we have found that uh, most of customers are not willing to pay too much for the company, for the Starbucks products. And also bring its coffee, uh, coffee makers and suppliers to the Afghanistan in order to remain in the same good quality uh, as the in other countries Starbucks produces. And also it should establish coffee houses in the, those places which are the securest part of the country, like in Ahmed Karza International Airport, and a couple of the malls. These are going to be best places for you. And that's um, that was our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.